Today on Simple Food, Simple Life, we're going to make country pork ribs and sauerkraut. Stick around, you don't want to miss it. Hello, it's me, Robin, with Simple Food, Simple Life. Today, we're going to make something very, very delicious. We're going to make ribs and kraut. Now, this is um, a recipe, well, yeah, I guess it's kind of a recipe, but it's the way I do it. Uh, this is something I promised you uh, in recognition of uh, National Pork Month, which is this month of October. And um, I did make the Schweinschnitzel for you, and so today I'm going to make ribs and kraut. Now let me show you what I've got here. I've got um, eight pieces of boneless uh, country pork ribs. Now these were originally uh, longer than this, so there I had four large pieces, about three pounds. I cut them in half because they were so big, and uh, so now I have eight pieces of boneless country pork ribs. They were on sale for $1.99, so I think that's pretty good. This is right around three pounds. I, I got five or six pounds, I think, when I bought them. And I've had them in the freezer. So, that's the rib part of our dish. Now then, what I have here, I've got um, three pints of sauerkraut. Now, this is some sauerkraut that I canned back in February. And so, I'm going to use that. I've got three pints. Um, normally, you would use um, really however much kraut you want. Um, it depends on what you like to do for sauerkraut. Um, I like a lot of sauerkraut, and when you do this dish, the sauerkraut will cook down some, so you have to kind of remember that. Okay? All right. So, what I've done here, I have uh, rinsed my... Uh, pork ribs really good and drained them really well and I've had them uh, sitting in a little black pepper. Now I don't salt my ribs when I make ribs and kraut because my kraut is salty enough so I don't put any salt on them whatsoever. <clears throat> so that's all you need plus a little bit of oil. Now let me show you what I have that I'm going to cook them in. I have my cast iron Dutch oven. Now this Dutch oven, uh, there's a little story behind it. Uh, my Many years ago my husband and I were in, um, with my son, we were in uh, Maine. We had gone to Portland to see my grandson. And um, so in some of our free time, uh, my son, who used to live in Maine at that, at, prior to that, uh, took us to Freeport, Maine, and that is the home of the L.L. Bean um, flagship store. <clears throat> and so, uh, it's a huge, huge place. It was terrific to visit. It's just got everything imaginable. And uh, so, we were going around the store and looking at different things, and my son said to my husband and I, he said, I want you guys to pick out something that you want to buy, and he said, I'll pay for it. And uh, he wanted to get us a little something, and so I, I said, oh, you don't have to do that. And he said, no, I want to. He said, pick out something that you want from L.L. Bean, and I'll, he said, I'll buy it for you. So... Uh, I said, well, I've already seen something I would like to have, and I would like to have this cast iron Dutch oven. And he said, he was kind of shocked, and he said, Mother, he said, that is a cooking utensil. He said, you don't want that. He said, don't you want something more personal? Don't you? I said, no, I want that. And he said, are you sure? I said, yes, I am. And so he bought me this, and I love this this um, Dutch oven. <clears throat> now, that should indicate to you that I'm not a diamonds and jewel kind of person. <laughs> to me, this is wonderful. 
So, uh, and I bet some of you out there are like that too. So, anyway, that's the story behind this wonderful cast iron Dutch oven. It's made by Lodge. It's really good, and I've used it many years. That was over, well, well over 20 years ago. All right. Now then, let me show you something. Um, this is something neat about this cast iron kettle because um, when it when the handle is like this, you can take the lid off. But when you want to lock down your lid, you turn it the other way, and the lid is snug. It stays perfectly nice. I love this. Love this so much. All right, <clears throat> I like my cast iron. All right, now then. I'm going to turn my burner on here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to get this oil heated up. And um, then we're going to brown our ribs. That's an important step. Don't skip it. Okay? And I know that some of you are going to ask can I do this in the crock pot? I guess you could. Um, but I would encourage you if you're going to put it in a crock pot all day to still brown off uh, the meat, okay? Um, it just makes it taste better. I can't help it, it just does, okay? All right, now then, uh, I'm gonna get this heated up. I'm gonna put my lid on here so it can get heated up a little faster because we want our oil to be <clears throat> pretty hot. So once that gets heated up, we're gonna put our meat in. There, I think we're, see it sizzling? Can you see it? I think you can. Okay, I went and got my apron because I thought, you know what? I'm going to have my shirt splattered with grease if I don't. So, just pop them in there, don't crowd them. If you can't get them all in, it's not a big deal. You can do it in a no, no problem. So I've got four in there. I have four left. And I'm just going to brown these off to get a nice little crust on them. You're not going to put these here. You're just going to Just brown them off on both sides, get a nice little crust going on them. Just kind of seal them up a little bit. It just makes them taste better. Anytime, because these are going to go in the oven, anytime you're going to um, oven roast your, the meat, it really does pay off to take a little bit of extra time and brown it off. Uh, one thing, too, that I want you to know is um, this is uh, not a dish that you can do quickly. This dish takes a little bit of time and because we're going to put it in the oven for a couple of hours. So that makes a nice Sunday, a nice Sunday dish, um, a nice weekend dish. You have more time to spend with it, okay? Not everything has to be so quick. Sometimes it's good just to take your time and to enjoy the process. And I'll tell you something, your house will smell great from this cooking. I learned to make this dish um, from my first mother-in-law, and um, she was a wonderful cook. And this is one of the things she made. She always made hers in her cast iron. Uh, Dutch oven. Uh, she, I just learned to make it from watching her make it. It was very easy to make. And so I just jumped in there, and it's really a family favorite is the ribs and kraut. Matter of fact, my oldest daughter, who is vegetarian, she said, Mom, uh, when I ate meat, that was one of my favorite foods, and she said, you have to show them how to make that on your YouTube channel. She said, if I ate meat, I would eat that. So, 
There you go. It's been endorsed. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move these over here. Turn my heat up a little bit. And I'm going to, because some of the juice starts to come out of these, and I want to cook that off a little bit. I don't want that to stay in there. Now, once these get cooked off, <clears throat> I'm going to come back and I will show you what to do next. All right, now you can see that I have browned these off nicely. Now remember, they're not cooked through, they're just browned on, on either side. And I've turned off the heat under here, and I'm going to add the kraut, and I'm going to add it juice and all. Okay? Now the reason I took the meat out and I'm adding the kraut, is sauerkraut, is because I want to deglaze this pan. And that's the reason. So I'm going to turn the heat back on. I'm going to bring that up to a boil. And then I will add the pork ribs back in. Okay? So, that's what I'm going to do. And that's just going to deglaze all that goodness off there. And remember, I didn't salt the ribs because sauerkraut is traditionally fairly salty. Um, and... Remember also, you don't have to can your own sauerkraut. You can uh, buy it. Buy it in the can, buy it in the refrigerated section of your grocery store also. Some people prefer one or the other. It's all up to you. It's whatever you like. But this is basically what it is. Now, I'm going to add my my ribs back in. Just gonna nestle them down in there <clears throat> so they can get nice and familiar. <laughs> now you can see this makes quite a bit. And of course the meat will cook down, the kraut will cook down, but you can see how wonderful this is going to be. I'm just gonna tuck those ribs in there. And what this is actually going to do, once you put this in the oven, I've got my oven at 350 degrees, and I'm going to put it in for the first hour, and I will, then I will check it um, and move it around a little bit too. Uh, what this does, because of the liquid, you are actually braising the ribs. You are braising the country pork ribs. That looks good already. Come on, admit it. Tell me, does it look good? <laughs> it does look good, doesn't it? Okay, bringing it back up to heat before I put it in the oven. I'm going to reach down, get a little bit of that kraut, put it on the top, and we will go from there. You're going to love this. You really are going to love it. And especially when you get a good bargain on these country ribs, oh, it's even better. It's even better when you can make it economically. All right, I'm going to pop this in the oven, put my lid on. I'm going to pop it in the oven. And I'm going to seal my lid on there because it's going to be in there for at least an hour before I check it. And then I'll bring you back, show you what we got. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and share. Get a cup of coffee. Do some work. Whatever, and we'll be back. Hi, I set my timer for an hour, and the timer just went off, and I took out the Dutch oven from the from the oven, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, now I want to caution you when you make this dish, make sure that you use a heavy pan to cook it in, okay? You want to use a heavy bottom pan. Uh, don't use anything flimsy. Use a heavy bottom pan with a nice fitting lid, okay? 
A Dutch oven works perfectly for this, by the way. Or even a roasting pan would work fine. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. All right, look at that. Now, this looks exactly the way I knew it would look. This is after one hour. Now, you can see that it's cooked along really great, hasn't it? And you can see there's a lot of uh, juices left in there. And the meat is cooking just fine. And that's what we want. Okay? Now then, keep in mind when you use a Dutch oven like this, not only does it cook all around, it cooks from the top down. That's why they call it a Dutch oven, because it's cooking all around. All right. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this back in the oven. I'm going to leave the lid off. And I'm going to put it in the oven for at least another hour, although I'm going to check it after about 45 minutes. And um, then I will show you what we have. Now, I want to tell you this one thing. I'm not going to do it this time, but you can do it if you want to. If you would like to add potatoes to your um, country pork ribs and sauerkraut, you can. And this would be the time to add them. Uh, what I do and have done in the past, I just simply peel um, uh, several potatoes. Um, I cut them in half and then I nestle them down inside uh, the, the uh, Dutch oven and uh, nestle them around the meat and uh, just let them cook in all those juices. And of course your potatoes will absorb some of those juices too. So just to tell you that now is the time to do that if you want to do that and extend your meal and your potatoes can be cooking while your uh, country pork ribs and sauerkraut are cooking. Okay? All right. This is going to go back on or back in the oven for one more hour. I will check it at 45 minutes. All right, we'll be back. Doesn't it look scrumptious? <laughs> you know it does. You want some, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay, we'll be back. All right, welcome back. This is what it looks like pulled out of the oven after another 45 minutes. And uh, you can see that the meat has started to get that show of that nice brown color. And it's very, very, very tender. Very tender. See that? Doesn't that look beautiful? You can see that it's got some nice juices in there. And see what I mean? The kraut has cooked down. See that? It's really, really good. So what I'm going to do, and that is left in there for 45 minutes more without the lid. Okay? And you can see why I wanted to leave the lid off. It's to get that beautiful color on there. Now then, uh, I am going to serve mine with some mashed potatoes and some steamed green beans. But can you imagine bringing this to the table for a Sunday dinner or a uh, just a weekend meal when you've got a little more time to devote to a good meal? And uh, I just want you to know it's easy. It's not difficult at all. It's just take it step by step and you can end up with this. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to very, very hot. I'm going to put it back in the oven for about another 10 minutes, maybe 15. And I'm going to uh, put the lid on, but I'm just going to kind of, I'm not going to seal it on there, okay? Because I want it to cook a little bit longer, but I don't want any more of my juices to escape because those juices are going to be very, very nice to put on those mashed potatoes along with some kraut. See there? Very good. All right, I'm going to do that. And then this will be ready to serve. Okay? All right. 
All right, here we are. It's all done. Doesn't that look wonderful? It's still bubbly. Can you see it? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Didn't take that long. It's not that hard, is it? No, it isn't. It's pretty easy. Listen, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And you know what? I hope that one of these days in the not too distant future, you will remember how to make country pork ribs and sauerkraut. And someday when the wind is blowing and it's blustery outside, you'll just make this dish, hunker down, and let the world go by. Listen, I love you. And you just remember that little is much when God is in it. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Thank you for watching Simple Food, Simple Life. Please like, subscribe, and share.